How's it going? I'm Brandon Pradell from Team 15 Despawn. Today I'm going to give a quick recap on the what and why behind our product, as well as give you guys sort of the summary of our process that we took to come up with our final concept. So this first slide is just some quick data on stress levels of engineering and dental majors from the University of Annamari. As you can see here, almost 80% of the kids from the survey, which was a few hundred students, reported moderate stress levels. Now mild, it's okay, it's pretty typical in the workforce and as a student, it keeps you on track, it keeps you on your toes, right? You don't wanna to be too comfortable. But once you hit these moderate levels, you're teetering one way or the other. It can take just a little tiny bit for you to suffer from severe stress, which can really affect productivity. Or if things kind of ease up, you'll go back to mild. Our goal is to bring you back this way. So again, our main mission is to give kids an outlet, right? Something that's simple, doesn't take a lot of thinking. It doesn't cause any more irritation, right? We don't want, to be, we don't want it to be too awful hard or insanely challenging. We just want you to be able to stop what you're doing, go to desk palm, distract yourself for a little bit, not to think too much. You can forget about what you're doing for just, just a moment and go back to it stronger and refresh later, right? So after you play desk ball, we want you to go from looking like this to looking like these guys. All right, so our use case, it was pretty, it was pretty simple. It was based off of us, me and my team as engineering majors, as well as our classmates in design and econ, right? We're all, we're all STEM mechanical engineering majors. We all suffer through the same classes. We all spend most of our time studying the same thing. So we figured, hey, what do we all like to do in our spare time besides catch up on sleep? Let's go out and party with our friends, right? What is the main thing everybody does at a party? Play some cup pong. So that is the biggest reason we made desk pong based off of this game, was so you could go up to desk pong, hold your hands and be familiar with it, right? It's not something foreign and new. You don't have to spend too much time thinking about the purpose or concept behind the game. You know what you have to do to score, right? So the first step in our concept generation was this mind map. It's essentially just brainstorming, right? We took literally just the word desk pong and we're like, okay guys, what does this make you think of, right? And as you can see here, we have stuff like aesthetics, replayability, and that is honestly great because that's a nod back to our initial customer needs and specifications, right? When we first talked to people, one of the biggest things they said was they wanted something that looks clean. They wanted something that didn't cause any more stress. So like to mitigate stress, we're like, okay, we need to make sure that no one's losing equipment on in the play area, like balls and whatnot. So this just means that even when we're brainstorming, we're not putting too much thought into it. We're still maintaining the integrity of our customer needs and specifications. So we're still like, we're still on the right track with our product. Even if we're doing this brainstorm kind of down the line after we talk to people. So our next step was the three, two, one method, right? We have three team members. We each made two sketches that kind of adhered to that brainstorm process. And we only took about a minute each for each concept. These two are just examples that made it into our, our uh, six sketch compilation from the concept generation table and our gallery method that I'll be presenting later. But these are just two quick examples. I made this one and Colin made this other one right here. So the next step was to make a concept generation table. This was just a really good way to organize the main functions of desk pong that adhered to, like I said, those customer needs and specifications, right? So this first one was safety. So to do that, our ideas were netted walls and a plastic backboard. Now, this does two different functions. One, yeah, it is safety. We don't want you launching projectiles all over the place. You can break something, God forbid you hit your cat, right? But also, it allows some replayability like we've had in our, our mind map, right? It's not, you're not doing the same exact shot every single time. Once you get a hang of the game, you don't have to play it the same every single time. You can go up to it and like, okay, I'm gonna hit this cool shot today. I'm gonna bank it off of this wall, right? So our mass transfer system, that's just a fancy way of saying the ball launcher. One of them is just a simple spring catapult system. The next is a pinball mechanism. You pull a spring back, the pin goes forward, hits the ball up a ramp. The last one is a simple slingshot. It's exactly what it sounds like, just a really small version. And then our return system, slanted table. So whether it's the top level or the bottom level, one of them is going to be slanted so the ball comes back to the player. Or we have a funnel. The purpose of the funnel is to go under the cups because no matter what iteration, 
from the concrete generation table we make, the balls will have holes in them. They go through that funnel and they go right back to the player. So these were our six that we ended up coming up with after the, uh, that, those two quick sketches. Each of us that day, we went back, made them a little neater, maybe added some stuff and then uploaded them. As you can see, they all have that safety feature. They all have some sort of ball return feature. Right here is the one where we have the two levels and the bottom level was the slanted part. The down here is the funnel. As you can see, the funnel is big, covers the entire area under the cups. And even if right here, you can see the pin has a ramp right in front of it. <clears throat> the netting also, it's plastic netting. It's not cloth, so the ball's not going to hit it and then just go straight down. It's going to bank off of it. It's just to save some material. We're not going to make them all plastic. And also, we don't want the ball bouncing around forever. So this was our final design. Now, what was awesome about the gallery method <clears throat> and getting immediate feedback from classmates is those were our customers. Right? Our customer profile was based off of us and how we related to our friends and peers around us. And guess what? Everybody there is a typical stressed out college kid. Right? So when they gave us feedback, like a few groups didn't like the funnel at all. A couple of them said they didn't think it was a good idea in any way. So we're like, okay, that's pretty explicit. There's nothing to interpret there. Let's not have a funnel. Right? A couple other teams didn't really like the slanted top because they didn't want to have to bend down and shoot up a ramp, right? <clears throat> so that was, that was really easy because we didn't need a scoring process. We didn't, we were not going to have to test too many things out. There's nothing to interpret. Nothing's implied, right? We got direct feedback from literal customers. Yes, we had people, peers like roommates and stuff that we picked at first to give us initial needs, but these kids reinforced it for us. Because even though they gave us super, super specific modifications, they still adhered to the integrity of our customer needs, right? We still have safety measures. We still have a ball return system, right? It's still aesthetically pleasing. You see right here, we have a VT in the back. Granted, with 3D software, we're not going to spend too much time decorating. But our final prototype will be decorated after Virginia Tech. But what's cool about that is that's not, that's not a full illustration of the aesthetic potential. Because... I, Desk Pong is going to be made in such a way that if we do ever actually sell it, if it actually becomes a patent product, you can design it any way you want. All right? it's, going to, it's going to be yours. So some stuff, some features rather, that we did take upon ourselves that wasn't really due to feedback <clears throat> was right here, these railings. So at first we were like, okay, maybe let's have these walls extend all the way down. But then again, that might be a waste of material. This is going to be 3D printed, so it's going to cost extra money. We decided there's, no, there's not really a point. As long as these walls, these framed walls, by the way, are the netted walls. These are going to go down either in line with that first cup or just past it. And our ball isn't going to be made out of a super bouncing material. So once it bounces around a bit, it's going to die out. It's going to, it's going to sit there and it's not much to grab it if you miss it, right? But if you make it, we want to make it to where you don't have to dig around for it. It just rolls right back to you. It's lit down here, so it's not going to roll out of the playing area. And with the launching mechanism, back to replayability and maneuverability, that slingshot, not really great at lobbing the ball. You're gonna have to, even if this is flat, you're gonna have to kind of bend down so it's gonna get really awkward. The pinball, too much of a process to make the ramp adjustable. So we figured, hey, this catapult's per perfect. If you want a bigger arc or a stronger arc, either one, either rotate it a bit, pull it down more, whatever you want to do. But at the end of the day, this is familiar to everybody. Everybody can connect to this, right? It's super, it's super simple. It doesn't have to be complex. This, this isn't meant to change the world. All this is, meant for is for everybody to mess around with this when they're super stressed, have a little fun with it, and then go on about their day. And this is a source to the data we presented earlier.